I also learned it still can come together when you have a big old rip in your quilt. There is a way to fix it. Hi everyone, it's Mary from Joyful and Mary Quilting, and I am here to welcome you to this week's episode of Quilt Talk, where we talk about everything quilt related. I have several things that I want to talk to you about first, and then we'll get to our topic, which is called how to fix an oops moment, or how I fixed my oops moment. It has to do with this quilt behind me, and as you can see, there's a lot of opportunity for oops moments in this quilt, but I had one big one that I was really struggling with, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But first of all, I always like to start with a merry moment, something good that happened to me this past week. Some weeks, I really have to search for a merry moment. Some weeks, it seems like there's nothing merry about the week at all. But I always find something because there always is something good, that even that comes out of the, the struggles that we have. Something good always seems to pop up and, and clear our heads, our minds, and get us back on the right track. This week was totally not that way because I had merry moment after merry moment. And I'm not going to share all of them with you. Some of them were family related. Some of them were quilting related. And one of them was YouTube related because that's where we are right now. We have over, well over 2,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. I cannot believe it. I am so happy to have each one of you as a subscriber to this channel. Who would have thought back in April when we had no subscribers, that we would get over 2,000 in such a short time. And it keeps growing. It keeps growing and growing. And we've gotten just so many wonderful compliments and kind remarks from all of you. And I just can't thank you enough. That makes me truly joyful and truly merry. I hope I'm touching your hearts. I hope that you're taking your quilting journey beyond the sewing seams and cutting fabric and involving everything, your mind, your heart, your hands, and your seams and fabric so that we know that when we are quilting, we are doing something extra special for ourselves and for those who also may be a recipient of the project that we've quilted. So it's just something that I enjoy, I love, and I am thrilled to be able to share my experiences with you each week and then through our quilting tips and our podcasts, our tutorials, our patterns, everything that comes along with that. So I have, again, a few announcements, a few Joyful and Merry quilting announcements before we get to our topic at hand. Our most recent video, our quilting tip video, was a product comparison of rotary cutting blades. I compared a titanium blade by Fabricut, just a general middle of the road blade uh, that everybody purchases, a brand name, good quality blade, and then an inexpensive blade that many people recommend from a tool shop. And so I thought, you know, we've got a lot of recommendations for all of these. And in doing a product comparison, I wanted to make sure that I at least gave each one a chance. And I think you'll be pretty pleased with the results that I came up with. In addition, the titanium blades by Fabricut they asked me to rate their blades. They had seen one of my videos and they asked if I would go ahead and check their blades out and give them a review of the blade. And I really wanted to compare it with other blades because sometimes when I see just one blade, I mean, any blade fresh out of the package, except for one, watch the video, see what I'm talking about, um, cuts good. What we wanna know is how good, how long, how does it work? How easy is it to cut? How much push do we have to use in order to get the fabric to cut and not damage our wrist in our hands? There's a lot of things that are involved with cutting. And when you do it over and over and over that repetitive cutting, you want something that's going to work well. So fabric cut, not only did we do the review and I'd, I'd already used their blades. I did the review, but I have already purchased their blades before that. And I'm a user of those. I'm sure they didn't know that, but I am a proponent of those blades right off the bat. And when they contacted us, they are offering a 50% off deal for their blades for Joyful and Merry Quilters. So there's a link in the description here. When you use that link, that's that will take you to that 50% discount. Fabric Hut has those blades. They come in a 10 blade pack. And with a 50% discount, they are cheaper than the best quality blades that I have ever used. So I really love them and I was happy to give them a chance. If you are at all interested, if you're doing a lot of cutting, even if you're not and you just want a blade that works well, check them out. In addition, we have a new quilt pattern in our Joyful and Merry quilting store. And I can't hold it up because there's just not room, but I'm gonna show you. This is our beautiful Halloween quilt. And the little girl is down here. You can see her. And here's the little boy. There's six ghosts on this quilt. 
And if you go to our website, joyfulandmerryquilting.com, click on store, you can see the pictures of this beautiful quilt. It's one of our newest quilts. And when we put a new quilt out for our Joyful and Merry quilters, it's a $7 pattern. You're not going to find a pattern for $7. You can only get it for $7 on our website. You go to the website and it will be available for a limited time for that price. So if you would like to make this and it looks like something that would be fun to do, which it is, please go to the website and check that out. It's an easy quilt to make. I put it together in a weekend and I did work pretty steady on it, but you know, including the quilting and the binding, I had it all done in a weekend. So if you need a Halloween decoration or a gift for someone for Halloween quick, this is a great project that you might be interested in working on. So that's that new quilt pattern. Then our night owl quilting is happening Monday night, September 25th. And it's going to be really fun because I am going to be at a retreat with our Project Linus board and we're all going to be there. So we're all going to be sharing. We're all going to be working during that hour or so, whatever we decide to do at 10 p.m. Monday night. It's 10 p.m. Central time. So I won't be home. We will be at the retreat, but we will still have our, hopefully the internet will work and everything will be well. You know how that goes but we're gonna try our very best. The project is going to be our lumbar support. We're calling it the back bliss pattern. And it's just something that you put on your chair and we're at a retreat. So putting this behind my back when I'm sitting in a hard chair is something that I really look forward to. It's really cushy, it's really soft. It's a travel pillow as well. It's not a big size, it's just a little one. And you can use it if you go on a plane, it scrunches down into nothing. You can use it here, you can use it behind your back, whatever you need, but it is a great present. The reason I say that is because this time of year, we are always looking for gifts. We're looking for favors for groups that we belong to, quilt guilds, our appreciation breakfast that we always have, always looking for gifts. So during these night owl quilting sessions for five weeks, actually we're on week three, this will be week three, I'm offering you some free patterns with those particular favor ideas in mind. Now, the pattern is only free during the week right around Night Owl Quilting. So the first pattern that we did was our Candle Cozy. This is a three inch candle, but you can do smaller or larger. You can put a glass in here. You can do whatever, a cup. It could be a nice mug rug. Anyway, this one I did for Halloween. And the fun part is it's got a little surprise inside. And you do that, you put the little surprise inside when you make these. So this pattern is no longer free. This pattern now is on our website, still cheap. It's on our website in the store. Last week, two weeks ago, the pattern was this hexagon pot holder. And that's also in the store now because the time has expired because the new pattern that we have, our lumbar support pillow is now on the website for free. So how do you get it? Go to joyfulandmaryquilting.com slash owl. That's where our free patterns always will be for the night owl quilting, slash owl. So if you go there, there's a free download. You just download that pattern. Then you can come to the night owl quilting with your supplies if you want to sew with me and we can make it together. It's really fun. Sometimes It's got a couple little tricky parts, so it's helpful to have somebody walk you through the pattern. If you're not able to come to the night owl quilting, if that's not your thing, it will still be available under live videos on our YouTube channel. So you can always go there and rewatch it. So either way, you can have it. If you do it with us together, first of all, it's really fun to do the live quilting at night. And then you can chat with us as we go along. So totally up to you, whatever you want to do. But it's going to be really fun this week with all my friends. So I hope that you'll join me. So today's topic is how to fix an oops moment or how I fixed my oops moment. And I have to tell you first a little bit about, I have to give you a little preview to this because you really have to understand what I went through. This is like, this is a story that this is my therapy now telling you all about this situation, because even though it happened a few years ago, it still bothers me big time. I saw a book. It's called The Bible Sampler Quilt, 96 Classic Quilt Blocks Inspired by the Bible by Lori Aaron Hurd. Okay, so this is what it, sorry, my printer's being goofy. I got a new one, but I haven't hooked it up yet. So it's got a little streak down this, but this is the cover. The reason I'm showing you this paper cover is because I can't find the book because my sewing room is being remodeled and we put all the books and everything in a box and I couldn't dig down deep enough to get it. I have a lot of books. So I just printed the cover and I loved this. One of the reasons I loved it was, first of all, I tried the Dear Jane quilt. The Dear Jane, I won't get into it, but it's four inch blocks similar to this. It's a Civil War quilt. And I made a few and it was fun, but it was really, really tedious. And I just knew I wasn't ever going to finish it. 
So I sold it and I bought this book, which are six and a half inch blocks. Now, the way the Bible quilt goes together, you can see it's just all the blocks are on point. And I wanted it to be a little bit more intricate, I guess. So I decided to use the Storm at Sea look with those diamonds and those square and a squares separating all of the blocks. I really loved the way that that looked with it. I kind of mapped it out and I thought that would be really fun to do. So all of those pieces had to be put together and then all of the blocks had to be put together. So I had part of it done and I had to give a, I gave a lecture to a home extension group on quilting. What else? <laughs> and when I gave them the lecture, I showed the part that I had done. I probably had, I don't know, not quite half of it done, but I was really proud of it and I wanted them to see. And what I did was when I selected, you know, there's 96 blocks in the in the book and I didn't need 96. I only needed 90. And there were some that I wasn't really crazy about. So I eliminated those down to 89. And then the bottom corner one, I made up a block and I called it Mary's Journey. And I just wanted something that would be significant to me that would kind of bring it all together. So anyway, as I was putting Putting it together and showing it off at that event, they invited me to return. And they said, we would love to see that Bible quilt finished. So I thought, oh no, it's not even half done. I've got tons of things to do. I don't know if I'm going to get it done. But I, I was determined. I thought, I am going to finish this. So I set goals. I decided I needed to have a certain number of blocks done each week. Some of the blocks are pretty easy, as you can tell, and some of them were really hard. And they took a lot. I had to do them over because they just didn't look right. And I wanted to make sure that they all fit together properly and that I used the right fabrics. And I liked, at the time, it was the reproduction Civil War fabrics that were popular. So that's what I used. And, oh, it was just so much fun to put the blocks together. And I got it all together. And it was time for me to quilt it. Okay, so picture it. I finally had the top together. I, I had two weeks left before I was to give this lecture. So I was really tight on time. I decided to name the quilt Peace Be Still, just because I thought it just made me peaceful and happy every time it was my therapy when I was working on it. So that was the name of it. I named it before I even finished it, Peace Be Still. And so I was really, again, excited to finish it, but I was a little hesitant to hurry because I didn't want to mix anything up. And so I wanted to make sure that I was right with everything that was there. So that was kind of, that was my philosophy. So I was working steadily, but very carefully because I put a lot of time and effort into this and I wanted to come together right. So I put it on the long arm quilt machine and I had it all ready to go. And that's when everything started to fall apart. Now I've got a whole list of what happened and I'm glad I wrote it down because it's hard to remember sometimes after the fact, you know, I went through such trauma that I probably would have blocked it all out had I not written it down. So first of all, I ran out of bobbin thread after quilting half of the quilt. Okay, you think, well, that's no big deal. Why more? Mm -mm. I ran out of the bobbin thread. I had no more. There was no more thread. And I needed the exact same color in order to continue quilting the rest of the quilt. It was just a weird color. Normally, I just use a real basic color, but I wanted this to look really good. And so I picked the color that was a little bit off, thinking I had plenty, and I didn't. It wasn't the same color as the top thread. It was a different color on the back, and I needed that color to continue. So I had purchased the thread from Superior Threads, and I had two weeks. I only had two weeks left. And so I was going to place a rush order with them and ask them, please, 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 could you get this to me just as quick as I can? Well, it turns out that they were moving their business from the West Coast to the Midwest during that week. I'm like, what? Why? Why this week? Why couldn't you all move last week? Why couldn't you all move next week? Why do you have to move this week? I need thread. Fortunately, they were still filling those orders. And so they said, yeah, no problem. They'll get me the thread. Oh my gosh, I was so relieved. So I thought, okay, there's a little miracle. So they sent me the thread. It came in just a couple of days, the bobbin thread, and I had plenty of the bobbin thread and I was able to continue. Then the worst of the worst happened. I was quilting and normally I just, with the long arm machine, if you're not familiar with it, the, the machine quilts as you move the handle. So as I'm moving the handle, the needle is going up. You stop, then it stops. Well, sometimes I have the needle in the needle down position when I finish in case I'm moving things around or getting a new ruler, which with this quilt I had to because I did so many different things that I, I didn't want the machine to move out of place with the needle up because just the slightest bit of movement 
and then the carriage will start to go again. And I didn't want that to happen. So I put it in the needle down position and just would leave it down there as I turned it off, which was fine. The problem is that when I went to move the carriage, I forgot that it was in the needle down position and I yanked it and the tip of the needle came up a tiny bit, caught on one of the blocks and ripped it right in the middle. I have pictures of it, but I can't really show those to you here, but it just made a rip right in the middle of one of these, one of those one of those right triangles, the dark red ones. It was so obvious. There was no hiding it. You know, people will tell you, how do you fix that? They'll say, oh, applique a little heart over it. I couldn't. I couldn't applique a little heart over it. Oh, you know, when you do it, you can whip stitch it together. I couldn't whip stitch it together. You could see it. It was right in the middle of the quilt. There was no way. I was so upset. I was so sad. I didn't know what I was going to do. I finally thought, I thought, you know what? This should not be called Peace Be Still. This should be called Master the Tempest is Raging because Satan is in charge of this quilt. It was just just crazy. It was like everything I was doing with this thing was going wrong. And I was so upset about it. So I thought, I've got to fix this. Now I've probably got a week left, maybe not even that. I've got to fix this hole in the quilt. What do I do? So I was thinking, you know, trying to be logical, trying to think, what should I do? So I came up with a solution that I'm going to share with you. What I did was I printed the block on freezer paper. And then I cut out the piece out of the freezer paper that was torn. And it was this one. It was torn like right up there. So I cut out the piece. And then this isn't the fabric because I didn't have any more of that. But just to show you. I took a piece of the fabric that I made this out of and I fused the freezer paper to the fabric piece. So it's there and then I cut it out. That's how I made sure that I cut it exactly right because I had paper pieced these. All these were paper pieced. So I knew that this was exactly the right size and I had extra. So I did that. I cut that out and then took off the freezer paper. Then I went around the edge all the seams that were around the edge and I picked them out so that I could pull out the bad piece and then I slipped this under in place of the bad one. So this would go right underneath and then all of the edges that were surrounding it, I made sure that they were all tucked in nicely. This was off. I put a dab of glue stick glue on there before I slipped it in just to kind of give it and I kind of stuck it in there and gave a little bit more glue so that when I put it in there, it did stick a little bit. And then those pieces that were folded back that surrounded it, there were three pieces. I made sure that they stayed folded under and I put a little glue stick glue around those two. I was folding it under so it wasn't as if I had sewn a seam there. It was more like, kind of like an applique, like a reverse applique. So I put that through. I had it all in there carefully. I took my ruler. I laid the ruler on the quilt, on these pieces And I quilted right on top of that fold all the way around the edge so that it caught this piece because this was flat and larger. And that was just right around the edge. And I did it. And I'm telling you, you can't tell. You can't see where it is. Right here. And this looks pretty good. You cannot see where I made that mistake. So the rest of the quilt is not perfect, let me tell you. There's a lot of mistakes, but I know that spot because I know what block it was. And I was so happy to see that it actually came together and I was able to fix that mistake. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. Because I'd worked so hard and I just felt so bad that I made such a dumb, careless mistake, which is exactly what it was. It was a careless mistake. I just pulled it in a hurry and caught that needle on the thread. And needles are sharp and needles can easily tear fabric. So anyway, so now I'm thinking I am home free. (laughs) No, I wasn't. I wasn't home free. I wasn't even close. So still traveling through the valley of the shadow of death. And as I was traveling through that valley, I was thinking about making my home there rather than getting out of there because I was getting so frustrated. I ran out of the top thread. Why I didn't check to see if I had enough when I ordered the bobbin thread is beyond me. I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why I didn't make sure I had enough of both. I was out of the top thread. Well, fortunately, I was able to get that. I was able to purchase that thread. I had to go get it, so of course it took time. I replaced it and that worked out okay, so that wasn't a huge major problem. So then, as I'm going along, I broke my needle. I didn't break my needle once, I broke it three times. The first time I ran over, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did to to break the needle, but when I did it, 
it threw the timing off on the machine. And I don't know how to fix that. My husband does. He's the one that did it. So I begged him for help. The timing needed to be adjusted. He fixed the timing. He adjusted it. It was working again without any problem. Then it made a terrible noise. And I couldn't figure out what the terrible, and broke my needle again. Broke it again. So we had to fix it again. Fixed it. I ended up breaking that needle three different times before we finally remedied what the problem was that kept causing that to happen. And he fixed it and he figured it out. But it took time. Time is ticking away, and this is my oops moment. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's an oops quilt, let me tell you. Then, again, I was really thinking, okay, we've got this all fixed. Everything is well. I'm going along, sewing along. I get to a point where I'm ready to stop, push the stop button, and the needle keeps going and 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 going, and it won't stop, and it keeps going, and then it stopped. Well, it's made tons of stitches all in one spot. It was terrible. Made a big old spot. So I had to pick all that out. Well, it turned out there was something wrong with the needle down position. Well, he fixed that. So we're like, how can everything possibly go wrong with this quilt all at one time when I need to have it in like three days? So I finally got through that. I'm almost done. I'm walking across behind. And you know how on a long arm, you have the quilt top hanging down and the bottom hanging down and the batting underneath. Well, the batting was a little bit longer than the quilt top and I didn't trim it off, which I should have, but I didn't. Stepped on it, tore a big hole in it. Oh, God. <laughs> How? I, I never have problems like this when I'm quilting. Never. I mean, it has ne- I've been doing this for 20 years. I've never had such a time. So anyway, made a big hole in it, took my thread out, whip stitched that up so that that was all back together good, finished up the quilt, got it done, sewed the binding on. It's gigantic. Sewed the binding to the back by hand. And here it is. Peace be still. <laughs> so... What is the moral of this story? Patience? Yes. I was very patient trying to remedy the issues. Attitude? Maybe not so much. I think I probably had a very terrible attitude while I was doing it, especially as I kept having more and more problems. I really wanted to give up. But what kept me going was there was something I needed to do. I needed to show this quilt. I needed to have it finished, it needed to look good, and I needed to show it to this group. I would have probably just said forget it and never finished it with all the problems I was having. But I knew that I had a goal in mind. And that is my message to you today. Those oops moments, look what I learned from all that. I learned how to time the machine. I learned what happens when your needle breaks. You have to time the machine. I learned why my needle broke. I learned that I need to get enough thread and bobbins ahead of time when I've got a big quilt, because this is a really big quilt. That's why it took more than I thought. I learned that I need to push the batting underneath, which I always do now so that I don't step on it. And I also learned it still can come together when you have a big old rip in your quilt. There is a way to fix it, and I did fix it, and I figured it out, and for that, it did bring me quite a bit of joy, and I'm thrilled to report to you that this quilt is just one of my favorites. It's a treasure. I don't have it on a bed. Well, I do have it on a bed. It's on a guest room bed. It's not on my own bed, but I love looking at it because it's such a reminder to me that there are so many wonderful things that come from a beautiful quilt, whether it's just a learning experience, whether it's the comfort of hugging and holding a quilt, whether it's beautiful fabrics and a lovely pattern, or whether it's just the knowledge that we get from what went into the creation of a particular quilt pattern, what the designer put into it, and what the purpose was behind that effort. So I am so grateful for you joining me today, and I hope that if you have a quilt that's either given you fits or you've decided you didn't want to work on it anymore because you've had trouble, go back and give it another shot. You learn a lot from those mistakes. I learned a ton from my oops moments that I have used since then in order to create quilts that I am extremely proud of and where I didn't make the mistake simply because I learned from the mistakes of this one. So thank you for joining me. I am so grateful for you coming in and sharing this time with me. I am always trying to be joyful, always but I forever will always be merry. Thanks again, and we will see you again for our YouTube Live Monday night, our session, our night I'll hang out, 10 p.m. Monday night, September 25th, and again for another podcast in the future. Please check out our quilting tips. Take a look at that bootyful Halloween quilt pattern if you're interested in that, and take a look around our store. There might be something there that you'd like to buy as well. The free patterns are there. We still have our free wreath pattern, joyfulandmerryquilting.com slash wreath with three different Christmas designs in it. And we also have our Back Bliss Lumbar Support Pillow 
that we're going to be doing, and that's free, joyfulandmerryquilting.com slash all. So we will see you again next time. Have a wonderful week, everyone, and I hope your entire week brings you very much joy.